All right, this, uh, this um, presentation looks more closely at the album tool within the network, and I barely made reference to this in the first half hour. I'm guessing that um, most of you who are in on this webinar already get primary sources. You understand how they're used in inquiry. Um, I, I have a feeling you, you, you just get it. And that you've probably created your own primary source sets in various ways. So maybe you've created them from various institutions uh, that already have an album tool. Maybe you've even made your own um, through whatever means you can, can muster. So a Word doc, a uh, Google slideshow or a Google doc or some kind of annotated resource set or maybe just, just a whole lot of PDF printing. So we're going to go through the tool in the network that makes this quite easy for you. But first, again, if you haven't registered for the TPS Teachers Network, you can do it anytime. Um, but we're ready to move on to the album and the DIY portions of this webinar. So move on along and talk about the album tool in general. It is really like no other album that I've seen in other educational networks. Um, other tools exist, obviously, and you could probably name a few. I certainly could in other platforms for creating primary source sets. But typically these tools limit selections to the collections of a single institution. That is really what sets apart the album tool in the TPS Teachers Network. So on the left, you can see some of the things you can do with the album tool. Um, you can, you, when you create them and when you build the albums, when you fill them up and when you continue to, to add to them and then when you want to share them. So all of those um, actions are listed on the left hand side. And on the right, you can see an album, the beginning of an album, the top part of an album that I created last year and it was about Dr. Harry Plotz. Now, most people have never heard of Dr. Harry Plotz. I had never heard of Dr. Harry Plotz. Mm, I can't even remember how I heard about him at the time, but he is credited with developing a vaccination for typhus during World War I. So again, you can see the, these relationships between, um, between pandemics of the past um, and teaching students today online about those pandemics of the past. You, you can see a description of the album across the top. And that is something that I added and that's something that you add when you create an album in the network. And you'll see then below that, there's a portrait of Dr. Platz, so you can upload images. There's a photograph of Dr. Platz with a visiting health team in Poland after the war, this is in 1920, and he's still working to eradicate uh, typhus. He did eventually go on to become the first head of the Centers for Disease Control. So there's another connection to today. And then on the right-hand side, one of my favorite pieces in this album is a Chronicling America article that has all sorts of directions you could take it because it's titled, A School Teacher Made This Man Great. And it tells about Harry Plotz wanting to drop out of school in Brooklyn, I believe, as a teenager and a teacher who drew him into running for track. And he ended up going on to save millions of people from typhus. The album tool in the network makes it pretty easy to upload primary sources in a variety of formats. So audio, video, images, uh, text, historic newspaper articles, and so on. Also, you can upload secondary sources and links to outside supporting material for whatever unit you're planning. Uh, you can, if you, if you have a lesson plan already made and you'd like to just keep it in one place with primary sources, you can upload files. So you can upload those lesson plans as well and really more, but both from within the Library of Congress and from the outside. The one advantage to uploading material from the Library of Congress is this album pulls in all of the bibliographic data right along with the primary sources that you upload directly from the Library of Congress. 
it this album tool also provides support for full lesson planning or or simply um, adding teaching notes to your album and also like everything in the network as i mentioned in the first half albums can become centers for conversations um, discussions feedback you can also make um, make your albums collaborative so that it may not be just your album but you can invite and invite other people to collaborate on the same album so maybe you have a teaching partner or a department um, or even people within the network who have valuable material to add i'm going to show you uh, an album that i created more recently and this was really just based on kind of a whim to tell you the truth. It all started with a post in the network from a mentor in the network who shared this Google Doodle on February 1st of this year. That seems so long ago now, doesn't it? Um, this was a Google Doodle celebrating the 60th anniversary of the Greensboro sit-in. And the Doodle had been shared in the network and then um, somebody else in the network shared some information about this lady. And this lady is named um, Karen Collins, and she lives in Georgia. And she has made, for 24 years, she has made these miniature di dioramas of African-American history. And this is, uh, this is from her website, and you can play a 10-minute video on her website about her process. So it's really good for integrating the arts. But I was so taken with this Google Doodle and with this additional information about Karen Collins, this artist, folk artist, really, that I decided to make a whole album in the network about the Greensboro sit-in. And this is how it turned out. So this is a screenshot of the top of the album. You can see that it has a description that I added. And the idea started with Margaret Lincoln. So you can see that I credited her. Remember how we did that with the at symbol? Uh, in, so you can credit other people in your posts. You can add the links, which you can see the active links there. I added tags. And then the three items at the top of the, of the album are the lunch counter, the actual lunch counter at the old Woolworths Five and Dime store. The next one is a photo from the Library of Congress, a drinking fountain that shows Jim Crow at its peak, <laughs> uh, its awful peak. And the next one is a representation of an oral history interview conducted uh, with a woman who actually helped plan the sit-in with students from the Agricultural and Technical College of North Carolina. So you can see some of the variety of items that you can share in an album. This is a, the bottom of the album. And you can see that I've added secondary sources. So a Smithsonian article about the 60th anniversary, really useful information. The next one is from another publication, the Knowledge Quest, which is an American Association of School Librarians publication. But I wanted to point this out because uh, one of our mentors in the network does a series for this publication on pairing picture books with primary sources. So this, this is um, a lead into the work that he's done. And then the actual uh, author and illustrator of the book that Tom in the previous item compared with primary sources are uh, Andrea Davis Pinckney and illustrator Brian Pinckney. And you can play that video directly from the album in the network for a classroom presentation. I also have arrows pointing to a couple of the um, download and share functions in every album. And we'll be going into that a little bit more later on. Here's a, an enlargement of the uh, the video and you could play that directly from the album. This is actually a fabulous video to watch. Well worth it. Um, and when you're in an album, you can click on any individual item to enlarge it. You can also on individual items in the in the albums, you can add tags and make them more findable. 
and you can add teaching ideas per item. So maybe you would want to say how you would use this item in, uh, in a lesson plan. So these teaching notes are, they kind of work two ways. They're a way for you as the album creator to share your process, to share what you're thinking about how you would use these items in your classroom. But it's also a way to get feedback from other people and their ideas, and that can definitely enrich the uses of the albums for many people in the network. Just to show you an example of some teaching ideas that I added to one item in this album, I took the, the photo of Ruby Bridges because I would like to expand the understanding of the whole period and, and connect to young people as well. So these three items on the right-hand side are just suggestions that I wrote in the teaching notes about how you might use this picture in your study of the Greensboro sit-in. And I'm not a historian, so I just wrote things down as they came to me. I thought they'd be a good idea to try. It's certainly not the only, the only ways you could use this album, but still some suggestions. Um, and another way to add context in your albums is to find articles. I love the newspaper articles in Chronicling America from the Library of Congress. I've just pulled out a couple of the phrases that are in this little article from a different place, so not Greensboro. Um, this was in Mississippi, and it showed that if African Americans knelt and said a prayer, they would be fined $200 and given six months in jail. But, and this, this is how they spelled ketchup. <laughs> uh, if white people poured ketchup and salt over Negroes during a lunch counter sit-in in Jackson, they got $100 fines, 30 days in jail, and were out on appeal. I think this is important contextual information for this kind of uh, an album and this, this, this kind of collection. Uh, I should mention that you can just keep adding to your albums as I did in this screen, but also you can reorder the items in an album. So you can move them around, you can edit your album as needed. Remember the tool that we use to edit. Always look for the white gear on the red background if you want to edit anything. I sometimes like to rearrange my albums and you can continue to go back in and develop teaching notes and they can become just kind of a part of a lesson plan. And we'll end up with everything in one spot. And then when you want to export, um, there are several options, as I mentioned before. So you can download as a PDF, that's the simplest, fastest, um, least controlled, I would say, kind of export. I often use the advanced download because the advanced download allows me to pick and choose what items I want to download. So maybe I want to just download uh, the items that are related to elementary school, uh, but I can keep my album all there with everything in it and just not download all of it. And you can see that we have also the possibility of sharing to Facebook, to Twitter, to Pinterest, and we have a shareable URL that does some interesting things. And if you go back into this uh, recording, you'll be able to click on this shareable album for the Greenboro sit-in and see what it looks like. But I did want to show you the top part of it. This is the shareable URL. And you can see that it strips out your name. It strips out the, any personally identifiable information because this is shareable on the outside of the network. And then we have a disclaimer here that it was created by a member, an anonymous member of the PPS Teachers Network. But you can share this album too. I mean, it's my album, but you can share my album to newsletters, to classes, on Twitter, on any of your social media contacts, uh, your email lists um, at your school. So you have a lot of options here. Uh, we have, I, I just, I stuck this slide in here because I wanted you to be aware that uh, 
Keith and Kyle have been working on a really cool Adobe Spark way of sharing some of the best albums in the network. And we're doing this during this period of uh, quarantine across the nation. So the first example went out today in a best of newsletter, but uh, anybody in the network will be getting these weekly for the next several weeks to, to look at some of the best, um, the best albums in the network. And it's a beautiful way of presenting them, I think. So they'll be sharing these weekly. Um, so we have 13 minutes and I'm gonna do something I think kind of brave. I'm going to go into the network and create an album for you. And this is kind of an experiment. So hey, Mary, before, you, before yes. you move on, we had a question. So um, Sherry was asking, and I believe this is a privacy question saying, will Mary Lincoln's photo and name share outside the network? I think referring back to that last album we were looking at. Oh, what a great question. I'm afraid it might. That's something we need to look into, Keith and Kyle, and make sure that we have a way of controlling that. I think in most places where you share it, um, it should strip the creators, or not strip, it'll just uh, not add that to it, but we'll have to look specifically in that instance. Right, because if I did it in the description, then you'd think that that would share. So great question. Yeah. I'm glad you asked that, Sherry. We're always a work in progress, aren't we? <laughs> Any other questions? Okay, I'm gonna to move to the actual network here, but this is what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be creating an album, take you through that process, and then I'm gonna call it a favorites album, and I want you to add to it, add your favorite primary sources. So you'll have about seven minutes to do it, so this is gonna be quick. But it's worked in the past, so we're gonna try it. Okay, I'm gonna to go to the TPS Commons. And I'm going to create an album. Uh, you can do it a couple of ways. You can go here to create an album. Uh, you can go to uh, create album here from the albums drop down here. And you can see there have been a couple more comments added or something's been added since we first were on here. You can see the two under the notifications. This is the same screen that I just showed you. I'm gonna select a group for my album. I belong to every group, so you'll see quite a list, but I'm gonna start with the TPS Commons, and I want to create a new album in that group. And you can see that here's my chance to uh, give a title to the album. So I think I'll call it mm, mm, Primary Sources for Online, oops, Online Learning. And I already have a selection <laughs> prepared to paste in. So this is a test album for the TPS Western Region webinar, the one you're in. And you will upload your favorite primary sources to the teaching notes. And I think I might add a couple of tags. I'll just add a tag. Let's make sure that it's good for all grade levels. And I'm gonna add a custom tag and call it album test and add that so you could find that again. And maybe I'll add webinar. Okay, we're ready to go. As I go down, I am going to make it collaborative so anybody in the network can add their favorite item. And I'm gonna add the album to the TPS Commons. It's as simple as that. The album is created. And you have a few minutes to add your own items. I'm gonna leave this screen up and I'm gonna expand it just a little so it's easier to see. You can see that you have a choice of inserting a link here, the URL, or choosing a file from your computer. So, and this item doesn't have to be from the Library of Congress, although that works the slickest. 
And I'm going to go back in about three minutes and see if we have any new items added. I see that um, Kyle put in a link to the first album from Adobe Spark in the chat box. So you're welcome to look at that too. See how fast everybody is. I see the notifications have changed to the number three, so I'm guessing somebody's added something. And if you have time, and I think you do, if you want to add a few quick teaching notes to the item that you upload, you could tell us how you use that favorite primary source in your classroom. I'm going to go back to my albums. I see we have one item already added. Treat them rough. Join the tanks. Click on that. Looks like Keith added that. Treat him rough. This is the full display. He's written a quick teaching note, example of World War I US propaganda. He's added some tags, including cats. And you can see that now we have, um, if I scroll down, and you can see where all of the data came in with that link because it, so that's automatic whenever you upload anything from the Library of Congress. I'm going to click on this second one. <laughs> this is from Kyle. I love showing students sports throughout history. You can imagine why auto polo was fairly short lived. He's added that in his teaching notes and asks what other historical sports can people can students find. So a good example. And again, if you go to the bottom, you can see that the link is included from the library, as well as all of the bibliographic data that comes in with it. I can always go back to the album. And we have a third item, Denver, Colorado. Let me click on that. This came from Michelle. And she has a quick teaching note and has added the hashtag Denver. And again, all the data came in. So hope that gives you an idea of how you can continue adding to albums over time. And I hope that after this webinar ends, you'll all feel um, brave enough to add your own items to the album. Here we have a Waltze Mueller map added, and that's a link. And I want to show you what this album would look like if you downloaded it. So the first thing I'm going to do is show you the download album link and go to advanced download. And you can see that when you're setting up your export, you can select all of the items or you can just select one at a time. I want that one and that one. I don't know that they're related in any way. I've selected those two. I see we have some new ones coming in. Proceed to the next step. I can add a title. I can drag and drop, I can move these around. And I can choose to export it as a PDF, not a doc at this point. 
So I'm going to go back because I want to um, show you the other kind of download that we use all the time. And that's the one outside the network. So I'm going to copy this shareable URL. It's now copied. Open up a new tab. Somehow, let me say okay. Paste it in. And this is the exported album right there. Already done. That's the quick way. And that's the one that strips out the, the publicly available uh, personal identifiable information. And you can see all of these are active. So I could go straight to this one room schoolhouse item. And it takes me to this link outside of the network. I think it's outside the network. Okay. And Mary, we had a question from Sherry, mm -hmm. and, and I've actually looked into it. But um, okay. um, she said, I added a link, and, but, but wanted to add the photo, what, what went wrong. So I think she was wondering why it came in as a link rather than a photo. And I looked at it, and I think, Sherry, you grabbed. Um, it's important to note that when you pull them into the um, album import tool that it needs to be the bibliographic page and not just a, a photo at the LOC um, because that's um, the, the algorithm that scrapes that information and pulls it into the network it needs to be on that bibliographic page in order to know um, where to pull it in. But if you have anything to add, Mary, please feel free. No, that's right. And that bibliographic page always starts with the three words about this item. So that's the URL that you need to, ex to, to import. You, and Sherry, um, if you wanted to try it, you can get rid of it and re-import it too. Yeah, and Sherry, if that is what you did and, and I'm reading that wrong, just let me know. Okay. All right, we're about out of time. I need to get back to the presentation now. We're almost done. I hope this has been useful. I'm going to view the, in the presentation mode here. These are all of our email addresses. I didn't put in phones because I wasn't sure that anybody was working on the same phones, not at work, but at home. So these are all our email addresses if you need to contact. Peggy's the director of the TPS Western Region, who's putting, and that is the TPS Western Region that's putting on this entire series of webinars. And you've heard from Keith and Kyle both, but um, that's all available for you. And we are always, always happy to answer questions. All right, I'm going to turn it back to Keith and Kyle. Well, that's our hour. Thank you once again, Mary Johnson. I really appreciate you uh, showing about the network and also the, the album tool is such a great way to uh, create primary source sets um, and also just browse other people's primary source sets that they created um, with the network album tool. Um, again, the uh, URL for the PDF or PD certificate um, is posted there on the uh, slideshow. It's bit.ly slash PS teaching online, um, all lowercase. Um, so fill that out and we'll get a, a professional development uh, certificate sent to you. Um, our contact information for the TPS Western region is listed on there as well. It's TPS Colorado at msudenver.edu. Um, um, and thanks for all attending. <laughs>